All right, so let's take a look at one more problem with diagonal forces. We've got here a 30, 000, sorry, a 3,000 kilogram helicopter that's tilted as shown. It's flying horizontally. It's not going up or down. The helicopter is experiencing a 1,900 Newton drag. So it says here we want the free body diagram, components, and sums of forces. That's just kind of there as a reminder to you. We're really looking for the acceleration of the helicopter. How quickly is it moving along this way? So that's what we're going to be looking at first. Now notice as well, the helicopter is at an angle like this. So if it was just horizontal, if it was just straight flat for us, not uh, at any sort of angle, we could think about it and there would be an upwards force and a downwards force. There would only be two forces, a weight and a uh, thrust that was upwards. So really what a helicopter does is wherever its blades are pointed, that direction, there is a thrust force. And so here, the blades are pointed this way, so there's going to be a thrust force in that direction. So let's start off by drawing the free body diagram. We have three forces here. Uh, we'll draw the dot to, sh to signify the uh, helicopter, and then we'll draw in here. We've got the thrust force up into the right, the weight pointing down, and to the left is the drag force slowing it down because it's moving to the right. But here we've got forces, they're not in opposite directions, so we can't really write the sum of the forces. We've got a diagonal force. So what we're gonna do is break that one up into components. We've got the X and Y components of the thrust that we'll start off by drawing in. And since we have those, we can kind of ignore that diagonal thrust. Just to clean up the diagram, I've removed it here, but you could keep it. You could either draw this as a second diagram, however you'd like to in your notes. But we do want this drawing in your work. Then the next thing is to write down the sum of the forces. We've already talked about this. We take all the forces in one direction, which in this case would be the thrust in the X, minus all the forces in the other direction, which is just the drag. And we get that in the X direction, the net force is equal to those subtracted from each other, and the net force is always equal to the mass times the acceleration in that direction, mAx. Now we can also do the same for in the Y direction. And in the y direction, we've got that the thrust in the y direction uh, is upwards and the weight is downwards. So we get that the net force in the y direction is thrust y minus the weight. And that's going to be equal to zero in this case because, well, the acceleration in the y direction is zero. And it tells us there that it's not gaining or losing altitude. That's the reason that we know that to be true. All right, so let's just clean things up a little bit here to give us some more room. We're gonna start dealing with the numbers now that we've gotten the symbols out of the way. It always is helpful to start with the names of the forces before getting into all of the numbers and trying to calculate anything. So let's take a look. The first thing we're gonna do is look at the uh, weight force. The weight, remember, is just equal to mg, and since the mass of the helicopter here is 3,000 kilograms, or three, three, yeah, 3,000 kilograms, the weight of the helicopter is going to be 30,000 newtons. We've also got the drag force, it's just given, so I wrote that down here as well. The next thing we can look at is, well, the y component of the thrust is equal to the weight. And so, well, we know then that the y component of the thrust is going to be 30,000 newtons. All right, now this is where things might start to get a little tricky because we need to figure out what the x component of the thrust is to figure out the drag because, or to figure out the acceleration because we know the thrust, we know the drag. If we know the thrust and we already know the drag and the mass, well, then that can give us the acceleration. All we need to know right now is what's the thrust, okay? So this is where we've got to take a quick look at the triangle involved because we'll bring back that diagonal force here. All right, so here's the diagonal thrust. It's going up and to the right, but mostly up. And we also have, can break this up into two components, a rightward component, the X thrust, and an upwards component, the Y thrust. Now, we've got this angle here that you see, that's the 12 degree angle over there. And we know that that's the 12 degree angle because, well, it's a small angle the way that we've drawn it. You can also do some trigonometry and, and follow the angles around and see that this is the 12 degree angle. Now, what we now know is that the X component of the thrust is opposite the angle, and the Y component of the thrust is adjacent to the angle. We look at this as a right triangle. So with Sokotoa, we can, uh, in trigonometry, as long as we know one of the sides of the triangle and the angle, uh, then we can go through and figure out the rest. So let's see this here. We've got that the X component of the 
thrust would be equal to the diagonal thrust times the sine of theta. Now that's what we're looking for, and to get it we need to know the diagonal thrust using that equation. Uh, but we don't know that yet, but we've got the second equation which tells us that the y component of the thrust is equal to the diagonal thrust times cosine theta. Since we know theta, the angle, and we know the y component of the thrust, we can solve this equation for the diagonal thrust, th. And so what we're going to do is divide both sides by cosine theta. On the right hand side the cosine theta cancels out, and we're left with the thrust is equal to the y component of the thrust divided by cosine theta. That's the way we can get, through, get at this answer. So uh, now that we've got that sort of side note out of the way, let's bring this stuff all back into our equations and organize things a little better. So now what we can do is we can actually calculate what is the diagonal thrust. So that's what we're going to do here is write out it's the y thrust divided by cosine theta. So 30,000 newtons divided by the cosine of 12 degrees. And when we actually calculate that, we get a number that is equal to 30,670 newtons. That is our diagonal thrust. Uh, so now that we have that, we can go through and right here we can calculate the x component of the thrust. It's going to be the diagonal thrust times the sine of theta. So if we plug that in, we've got 30,670 newtons times the sine of 12 degrees. If you type that in on your calculator, you get 6,377 newtons. That's the x component of the thrust. All right, so we've got an equation here. Uh, this is our x equation. This was the one we said we needed to know the x component of the thrust, and then we could go through and finish this problem. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger here uh, so we can see that in a little more detail, and then we're going to plug some of our numbers in. Uh, well, actually first what we're going to do is we're going to solve this for the a sub x. So let's do that. What we need to do is divide both sides by the mass, which is really just bringing the mass down over here. And now we get the a x, the applied, or the uh, acceleration in the x direction, is going to be equal to the thrust minus the drag force. And so let's put those numbers in here. We've got the thrust 6,377 newtons minus 1,900 newtons, all divided by 3,000 kilograms, the mass of the helicopter. And if you plug that into your calculator, you get that the acceleration is 1.49 meters per second squared, or meters per second per second. So to break things down again, this is how we can solve questions like this. We start out by drawing the force diagram. Then if there's any diagonal forces, we can break them up into components. Once we have those into components, we can write down the sum of the forces equations in the two directions. Usually it's the direction it's accelerating and then the direction that's perpendicular to that. And in this case, it's X and Y. Uh, once we're done with that, well, we just need to start looking at the problem, filling in as many of the forces as we can, figuring out which ones we need to know to find the acceleration, and then plug in plug it in and get the answer. Thanks for listening today. We'll see you in class.